I'm Roy D uh, from Lebanon. Um, uh, I presented Mundial 2010 at the Berlinale two years ago, and I won the Tadi Award for Best Short Film. Um, uh, my film talks about uh, a Lebanese gay couple who decided to go on an impossible journey to Ramallah to spend three days there. And uh, it's, so we spend the time with the, with the protagonist in Ramallah, in a city that Lebanese cannot visit. Um, and it's, it's as much queer as political uh, positioning of Arabic cinema today. Hi Roy, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good. Well, thank you very much for doing this interview with us. Um, well, first of all, a question about your movie. I mean, your film is actually showing an impossible situation about two people going to Israel from Lebanon, which is not possible because both countries are officially still at war. Um, how did you come up with the idea to this movie? What, what is the background of the movie? Um, <clears throat> okay, first they're going to Ramallah and Palestine through the Israeli uh, borders. So, um, so the thing is that being someone who lives in Lebanon and uh, who met a lot of Palestinians in Lebanon or outside uh, in, in different countries, I was always curious to to like about this situation where it's a very close country and it's like on the borders but we're not allowed like Lebanese are not allowed to go to Palestine and Palestinians are not allowed to come to Beirut or to Lebanon and so it all starts from this this curiosity of like people living between two cities which is Beirut and Ramallah that they are so close but they're not able to visit each other so this impossible journey was like uh, like this film was about this impossible journey, about uh, this couple traveling from Beirut to Ramallah as if it is possible, so make it, making it possible somehow. Mm. Where was the movie screened? Was it screened in, in Beirut? In fact, it was screened in Beirut uh, two or three times even. Um, yeah, it was it was once screened in a uh, in a video program called Video Works, organized by Ashkar Alwan, and at the Lebanese Film Festival, where it won an award also, and uh, at uh, at a, an art center called Beirut Art Center. Mm -hmm. Well, you said it, it won an award in the Lebanese Film Festival. So, how was the movie perceived by the audience, but also by by juries? In fact, it was it was very well received. I was uh, I was very positively surprised by uh, the the theater this night was was fully packed and it was already the screening was happening after the Tadi Award, so it was the first time also like being screened. So in in Beirut, so everybody was waiting to watch the film in Beirut and uh, it was amazing. Like the reception was amazing, and I was happy that it was also awarded in uh, in Lebanon for sure. Hmm. Um, what well, can you can you tell us a bit about the situation for queer people in Lebanon? Like, was do you, would you say that it is normally difficult to show such a movie in Lebanon, or is that something that regular happens? Okay, here the situation is a bit complicated because, like, in my situation for this film, for Modal Southern Antar, it was. Uh, for example, in the Lebanese Film Festival, it was programmed at the opening night of the festival. So the opening night of the festival is uh, free of tickets, so it's by invitations, as it is the opening night, which make for the festival possible to screen movies that are not presented for the general security for censorship. Mm. So, and uh, that's why my film was programmed in the, in the opening night. So uh, my film was not presented for the censorship. So, in fact, so the problem in Lebanon is that uh, such films cannot be screened once um, because because they they need a permit of uh, of screening from the from the general security, so from the censorship. And uh, here it comes where like sometimes they would accept or not, but it's like it's it's the risk to take to present it for the censorship. And the other festivals, it was the same. Where like those kind of festivals which are video festivals or a gallery uh, or an art center, they don't need any permission for screening. So, and I have never presented my film for the censorship. So this is the case. Hmm. No. How does the censor censorship work? I'm, I'm not quite sure if I understood correctly. So it's rather 
quite as randomly? Or? Whenever you need to screen a film in, in theater in Lebanon, you need to present it for the general security. So they have an office which gives you a permit of screening. So you have different kind of permits. You have the permit for festivals, which is easier usually, and you have the permit for commercial screening, when it's like going commercial and theater. And so they watch the film, and then they give you a permit. Sometimes they tell you, like, to have the permit, you have to eliminate this scene or, like, this moment in the film, or you don't have a permit at all. Mm -hmm. So the film will be banned from screening. Uh, and this, uh, this is a prerequisite to be able to, to go to the theater with. So, uh, so usually any festival, you have to present all his program to the general security to have this permit before going to theater. Mm. Except when it's, it's, uh, it's free of tickets. So there is this, because, because even this role of the general security is not something very official. Like in the law, in the Lebanese law, there is no uh, very clear text that say that this is the role of the general security to do. So there is something like common when uh, festivals are for the opening line, they don't present the film for the general security, uh, considering that it's, it's by invitation only. So it's not for the full public. So it's more something happening in private. And how? Yeah, we, have, we have our way to go around the, <laughs> the loads. <laughs> um, and, and how strict is this censorship? Are they extremely strict or is it sort of like randomly that sometimes they let movies pass or? It is like we have, it's how to say, like taboos or somehow uh, religion, uh, um, politics, politics when it comes to like to criticize uh, presidents mainly. And uh, so you cannot criticize the president, you cannot criticize the, the, the religion people, religion, I mean, uh, like. Uh, like cardinals or like the sheikh or and um, and sex comes the, the third like it's, it's the lesser uh, taboo possible so you can have a lot of films with the sexual content uh, nudity and then sometimes it's it's put off uh, for, for like 18 and plus but uh, but it is still and but in fact it's different when it's queer so when it's queer uh, there, there is like the, the more strict mm. Okay, um, would, would you say that there is sort of like a queer film history in Lebanon or in the Arabic speaking world? Unfortunately, not that much, in fact, no. No, not that much. Like, we have, we have, um, like personally, the films that I have seen are films where uh, they're portraying a queer character as as a um, as a secondary role or like someone who have one scene in a film. And usually, most of the time, it's it's more of a stereotype of a queer character. So it's, if it's the the gay man, so it's more the the more effeminate, effeminate uh, or like it's. It's usually to a negative um, a stereotyping image of uh, of queer. Um, it's very rare to see a film where the main role or like the main story is talking about uh, about a queer gay person. Um, yeah, that's that's more or less the situation. And this was part of like in Mondial. I was I. It, it was very essential for me that. We're going with this couple that is a gay couple, and at the same time we don't see them, and we're talking about something that's very political. So it's a very for me for me Mundial Southern Ten is as much political as much queer, and queer is political in the situation of Mundial Southern Ten. But like um, having them as the main protagonist was essential also as a political uh, positioning towards the Arab cinema also. Mm. So the absence was actually a statement, a political statement. Um, yes, somehow because also um, because also it is an impossible journey. So I didn't want to 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 go into this magic of uh, having really those person in Ramallah. I wanted always to have this distance where we always we as an audience were always questioning if they really were able to make to make it or not. 
and uh, like if cinema is able, a, capable of doing this magic of like the, uh, putting people in different spaces, I didn't want to go to use this tool to the end where we, we even like it's um, it's changing reality somehow. So I wanted I wanted it only to to question more than to to create a different uh, space. Mm. To me, it sounds also a bit like that. There are obviously quite a few obstacles when you're shooting a movie with queer content, but at the same time, those obstacles actually force you to be more creative. It seems to go around. Um, you know the problem with uh, in countries where where there's censorship and there's like uh, you have all those constraints. The problem is that a lot of artists uh, start to do auto censorship before like presenting their work, uh, or like even while writing or like while filming, they 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 start thinking about the censorship uh, in the creative process. So they do what we call an auto censorship. But this is a big problem happening in in all the countries where there is this kind of censorship. And uh, yeah, it's a challenge how to always like try to to think and to act uh, the, with the maximum freedom that you that you want to, and then go with the like and wait to see what will happen after. Like recently, my last project I was working on, um, I was filming in in Lebanon. So. And uh, and part of the censorship is that you have to present a permit of shooting also. Like so, when you start working on a film, you go and present a script, and they give you a permit of shooting, uh, and then you shoot, and then when you present the for the censorship for the screening, you have to present the permit of shooting that you had from the beginning. So at this time, I decided that I will give the full script as it is. I won't change anything. And uh, it was funny because I had a permit saying uh, that yes, you can shoot with the condition of uh, not promoting uh, homosexuality, not promoting uh, use of drugs because I have characters who use drugs in the film. And so, so it was like, and it was. It's, this is funny. This says nothing. Like, what does it mean to promote use of drug or to promote homosexuality or not? Like, this is debatable. And I was like, yeah, okay, I have the permit. I can shoot. Whatever. And we'll talk later. We'll see. But to promote is not understood as to depict. So it is not completely forbidden to show it. Or where where is the line between promote and showing? It's well, that's the point. There's no. It's it's very it's very vague. Um, like it is, it 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 comes back. Like to be able to understand this, you can go back to the to the to the law. Uh, in Lebanon, the law that we inherited from the French mandate, a very old law that's not used in French for now, uh, now for sure, uh, says that any uh, relation against nature is forbidden. So, and there is nothing more precise than this. So, what is used today in Lebanon to criminalize homosexuality is this law. So this it's, it's the role of the judge to say if what's happening here, the action, is against nature or not. And it happened like two, three years ago that a judge um, announced, uh, like declared uh, a uh, two person in front of him in the court innocent, uh, though they, they confessed that they had an homosexual act, uh, and he said that this law is not, we cannot apply to, to these people because they have not done anything against nature. And we're not in position to define what is for, with nature and against nature. So, uh, and this happened in Lebanon. And now any other judge can, can use this, uh, this verdict as a jurisprudence, as, we, as in a French law is, uh, is applicable, to, to, uh, to announce another uh, person innocent also. So you see, it's always like the the line is very vague always, and it's like it's, we even the even in the censorship they use words like this is the, this is sensitive for uh, I don't know for like this is politically sensitive or like this is uh, for social behavior it's very sensitive. Mm. So that it's, so it's always like you have you ha you have to it's 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 a dialogue. It's not a dialogue. It's more of a fight with the censorship, but. Uh, uh, yeah, this situation. Well, you gave this example of the two men and the judge. 
would you say that that other judges will probably apply this? Do you see a progress in terms of of queer rights, of gay rights? You know, in Lebanon, we have uh, from a long time ago, we have an association called Halim. Uh, that's that's an association for queer people, for LGBTIQ. Uh, and um, and this association was had 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 a permit from the from this government from the state. Um, also, like in a very tricky way, because in the French uh, law, when you present also a, a uh, the paper to the state, and if they, they don't reply in two months, you're automatically illegal. So that's what we inherited also from the French, and it was applicable for this association. Uh, and they've been working in Lebanon for like uh, uh, for a long time and doing advocacies, and they have their center. Um, what was the question? <laughs> the question was if, if you see a progress in terms of gay rights. Yeah, so so like the pro, the, uh, ad, there's a lot of work of advocacy, there's a lot of work with lawyers, um, there, there's publications, like this this case of this judge was like published in a book about like a whole research about the work of law and the cases in Lebanon that was um, under the same law of like against nature, what happened in each case. And uh, there's also associations doing workshops with lawyers to uh, to talk about about this law specifically. So, yeah, things are moving very slowly, but they are. But they're moving. Um, to come back to your movie, um, you said it was screened in in Lebanon after it was in the festival in Berlin, and then later it was film uh, it was screened in the Lebanon in the Lebanese film festival. Um, would you say that there was an impact that the Teddy Award had on the movie? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like, in fact, the it, it, the premiere of the film was at the Berlinale, so it was the first time to screen the film. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, like the film now have been shown in more than I don't know twenty twenty five film festivals around the world. It won eight awards. Um, I have received a lot of invitations from a lot of festivals because it was it was awarded at the Teddy at the Teddy. So um, and for sure, yeah, like it it gives this award gave a huge visibility for uh, for the film, and uh, it is it is very special to me because, like you know, this film was part of the forum expanded section at the Berlinale. Which is the most recent section of the festival? It's, uh, it's the it's the section that uh, where artists and filmmakers are presenting their work between video and video installation and film. So and this work and I, I come also from a background of contemporary art artists. So I work between film and video installation and video and this film. I was always wondering if. Like I, I, this is those categories of video, film, experimental. I'm not very, like, very, very, um, very fan of, let's say. So uh, it was at the forum expanded, and like suddenly it was like, wow, it's awarded. It was awarded the Teddy, and uh, it it opened a whole, a whole uh, spectrum for sure. Mm. And apart from from the impact on the movie, would you also say that it has that it had a personal impact on on you? I mean, how did you how did you feel when you got the movie, uh, the award for the movie? It was a it was a huge surprise because like I still, like I always tell this story about Puri uh, from uh, from the firm expanded uh, section. Um, one day before, we were having a, a dinner with all the people from the firm expanded, and he was like, I have tickets for you for a party happening tomorrow night. I was like, no, I'm going to the Teddy ceremony. He was like, no, are you sure? Like, this is a huge party. You will have fun. I was like, no, no, I'm sure I'm going to the Teddy award. I was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. And then I went, and I didn't know. So he was, and then I understood after that, he was making sure that I'm going to the ceremony without telling me, that you have to go because you're awarded. So it was a, a very, a very sur a huge surprise for me. And the funny thing is that before going, I was with my friend where I, I was staying in Berlin. And she was like, come on, let's put a tie and let's, let's dress as fancy as like going on red carpet. It was like, no, come on. It was like, yeah, let's do it. 
And I was there with my tie and like with my bota and the uh, dress and it looked like as I was going to have this award. It was so funny. <laughs> you look well prepared, I have to say that. <laughs> yeah, it was all by mistake. Like. <laughs> Um, well, the Tenny Award is celebrating its 30th birthday next year, so that means 30 years of awarding queer films. What is something you would wish for for the future of the Teddy Award? How would you wish the, the queer film world to evolve in the next, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 years? Well, first of all, uh, happy birthday for the Teddy um I wish I wish for the Teddy to to continue doing what's what's already doing. What's very special with the Teddy Award is that it's one of the I think it's the the only I'm not sure. It's it's one of the few festivals in the world where um, where where the where the where the award is coming part of a huge festival like the Berlinale. And the films are selected because they are already good films. They have their thematic quality. And uh, the Teddy Award comes to, to put light on, uh, on the specific uh, films that they have this queer uh, topic. So, and I think this is, this is great, especially when it's already happening in a big visibility of, uh, of a festival like the Berlinale. So uh, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a huge work. And I was always a fan of the Teddy Award, uh, like long time ago. And uh, it comes that I was once on the stage and won an award also. So it's great. Happy birthday! Yeah.